So a few years ago, I made a preset called uh, Markov Chains or Markov Sequencer. And I have here two versions. As is, this is a slightly altered version of the first one called D Sharp Minor. I want to use this one. And in here, um, this is how it looks like. It's basically a melody generator. And these melodies are based on prob probabilities. So this works kind of this way that we always start here with the first root note. In this case, it's D sharp three because this is here the scale of D sharp minor, right? You can dial in any scale you want. It doesn't need to be D sharp, of course. You can also dial in C major if you want to. So it starts always here with the root note D sharp. And then based on this graph here, we go to the next note. So these sliders here are basically probability sliders. So the probability is pretty high uh, for the next note to be here, the fourth, the fourth note or the fifth, right? So when we play this note, it goes probably to the fourth or the fifth here. And then it takes this probability graph to go to the next note. So the next note is probably the one or let's say three or six. And then it continues and steps from each node to the next node. So this is how it works. It's not like random. It's based on probabilities. And um, like I said, I took this uh, from a website called um, Hook Theory here. I basically used this graph here on the left side. This is actually made for chords, but you can also use it for notes. Um, so here you, we are on C, right? And then it shows you basically which note is probably the next note based on all the songs in the world or all these songs in this database. So a lot of pop songs and so on, right? So I took this uh, uh, information from here and uh, coded it in this graph here. So it's based on that. It's not just random, right? It's not random uh, sliders here. Um, and this generates basically notes and we can now um, output here or oh, let's use actually an oscilloscope. So this is the trigger here. I want to modify the trigger because you can see here it's just a short burst of a trigger and I want to have sustained longer notes, right? So I switch this here to trigger and I use a length and um, make this trigger pretty short. And then I just reverse the signal here. So now we have long sustained notes and just short bursts of zero values. And we just use this here as a trigger output. So with this, we can then maybe insert this here in a synthesizer and you don't need to use the polymer uh, device here. You can also use any VST and we can use sustain here, of course, then. So we have now sustained notes with this. And it goes from one note to the other note. It kind of plays a melody. So this is a bit boring. So we want to use here another note grid. Um, and just take this note and pass it through here to the output. But we want to switch it down maybe two octaves because I think these notes are way too high. So I transform this here two octaves lower. And then I want to generate a second note. And the second note is uh, just seven semitones higher, which is the fifth. And then I can use your select and maybe go for five semitones, which is the fourth. And then I use a dice, trigger this dice every time we play a note. And yeah, we choose here basically the second note to be either the fourth or the fifth, right? So it switches between these two notes. So now we generate basically already some kind of chord. Um, yeah, just, we just try this. And I don't want to use here a polymer synthesizer. I want to use a polygrid. And inside of the polygrid, use a sine oscillator. We basically do the same thing we did with a, a polymer synthesizer, but we recreate it here inside of the grid. Use an out. And we use an 
amplifier so we can change the volume and maybe a pitch input um, and use your transpose so we can change the, the note and let's use a quantizer and we already play the notes of the D-sharp minor scale. So I dial in here D-sharp minor scale again because we want to modulate here this transpose knob, right? Um, and we want to make sure we land basically on a note inside of the scale. So now we play here uh, already some, uh, some notes. Let's output this. Okay. So this is um, also a bit boring. So now we uh, introduce voice stacking. So we want to create this uh, patch three times and we use the voice stack modulator to bring in some differences between these voice stacks. And I just change it basically transpose. So each voice stack plays the sign, but with a different pitch. And the upper notes are way too high in volume for my taste. So I use also voice stack here to bring down the volume of the upper harmonics. Right, something like this. And we can maybe change also the let's say the ADSR settings, so the upper harmonics are way shorter and the sustain level is not that high and the release time is not that long. Something like this. Um, then we can introduce maybe, let's say a dice and we trigger this dice with the, yeah, with the gate. So we don't need the gate input. We can, just can use here this pre-chord. And this goes to modulator. So we want to modulate something. We want to modulate here the skew. But also in the negative range, we use here bipolar, right? So it modulates here in the negative range. But now you can see it switches basically. It jumps from one parameter to the other parameter, which is not what we want because we want to have a nice fluid background drone. So I'm bringing in here an attenuate where we can change change basically here the attenuation of this value and I use this here with the ADSR so this ADSR then also brings in this dice value slowly over time for each partial of course and for each note so this sounds like this Maybe we can also change here a bit uh, the tuning for the left and the right channel. And then we want to bring in an LFO because we want to change or wobble here a bit uh, with, the, with the pitch. So use another transpose. So I try to make it basically a bit alive. So at the moment it's pretty static sound, right? So I bring in a bit of wobble, pitch wobble here. I use Hertz. I don't want to tie this to the BPM. Hertz, okay. I'll modulate this here, just a slight bit. Not too much. And then I use bipolar here. Let's see how this sounds. So also here we use basically the voice stack modulator to change the uh, LFO speed setting for each stack. So each harmonic gets its different LFO speed setting. And then we um, use another um, LFO, or let's say random LFO. Uh, we do the same thing here. But this time we do it for the volume. And 
then here the same things we change each stack gets a different LFO speed. So now it sounds more like a live in my opinion. And then we put on this we let's say some reverb so we take here a combination of reverbs convolution reverb maybe chorus in there delay plus with a nice diffusion algorithm here space one after this maybe the stock reverb and after this a delay two Maybe don't modulate this too much here. Something like this. And if you don't like actually that it's super harmonic, uh, because every partial lands on the quantizer here, yeah? or la lands on the scale because of the quantizer. Um, we can just take the quantizer out. And then you get pretty eerie, scary sounds. The root note is still in the scale because we play at the D sharp minor scale. But all these overtones here, we basically uh, generate with the modulator here are kind of off. So the only sound in this uh, patch here is the root note that is in the scale, but all the overtones are off. And if we take it as modulator and amplify this, so we bring down the initial volume, which is more or less the root note, and we amplify all the overtones, which are disharmonic. It gets more and more scary. Or detune this here even more. So if you don't like the harmonic nature of this patch, you can just take the pitch quantizer out. We can also, instead of using here uh, Bitwig stock devices, can just take here, let's say, super massive. Oh, maybe let's switch this here also to polyphonic mode. So we have some nodes that can overlap. Something like this. And this is completely in scale, so you can place something along with the VST if you want to. Um, let's use another super massive here. So it's perfectly in scale. 
Um, you can also make some changes here to this one if you want to. It depends on your taste. So the Markov, uh, Markov chain sequencer here is in the description below, so you can download it. It works in every version. It's pretty old preset, uh, two years old or so. And um, I also put here this project on my Patreon if you want to download this. And yeah, I want to give you some inspiration how to use basically this preset and how to create drone sounds or nice backdrops for your ambient pieces. Um, I would, in my opinion, it's pretty nice to play along maybe with an analog synthesizer or with a piano on top or something like this. Um, yeah, that's how I would do it. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.